In today's tutorial, we are painting simple peonies, berries, rosebuds, lavender, daisies, and so many more because this is every watercolor flower you'll ever need. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel I teach watercolors, illustration, journaling, and much more so consider subscribing if you're new here. And I just wanted to take a second to mention that I've just created an e-course all about how to draw. It's for the absolute beginner. If you're looking for something a little more comprehensive, you want to do some learning this summer, do something nice for yourself, I highly recommend the course. I'll put a link in the video description so you can check it out and treat yourself. I'll start our video today with a quick supply rundown. I'm using hot pressed paper from Canson. It's on a block, which means all the pages are glued together. It's really nice for painting on. And then I have two glasses of clean water, as well as some paper towel for blotting. I'm using my Koi watercolor paints from Sakura. And I have two brushes today. And the first one is an animal hair round brush with a nice fine point and a big belly to hold all that paint. And then the other one is a synthetic round brush. Now the animal hair was about $25. This synthetic was like three bucks. And that's why I'm using it to mix my paints today. You can see I've set my color palette out ahead of time. And so while I won't switch between the brushes as I'm working, I've used the synthetic to get myself set up. And I also like having the colors all mixed ahead of time because then I've got a well thought out color palette and I'm not trying to think colors while I'm thinking about the forms that I'm painting. Okay, the first flower that we're going to do is sort of a little branch of either buds or berries. I start with a simple curved line and then I add these little branches along the length and there could be as many as you want. They can go any which way, it totally doesn't matter. Don't overthink it. And then you're going to come in um, with another color. The colors are not important. I've used uh, burgundy and dark green, but you could use any contrasting colors and you're just going to use the tip of the brush again and drag it out slightly to create these little bud shapes. And um, that's just a really easy one and it's great for filler. Next, I'm mixing up a nice, very, very light peach, lots of water, lots of white in there. And we're going to do a simple four petal flower. And I create this flower by simply dragging the body of the brush across the page either once, twice, or maybe three times. And then I try to just let that sit and I try not to overwork it or change it too much. So you can see three or four brush strokes. And then where there's a little more negative space along the top of each petal, I'll use the very tip of the brush to join it all together so it looks like there's a nice highlight. Then I come back in with a darker peach and I add a little bit of that darker color to the center of the flower and maybe to the tips of one or two petals. Moving along, we'll keep this snappy. This is sort of the same flower, but on an angle. So I like to do those petal shapes just with one or two strokes of the belly of the brush by dragging it across the page. You can see I've made the petals much smaller. Let's do one more there, one stroke, and that's it. And you can see how it creates this four petal flower, but it's on a bit more of an angle and you can do either three or four petals and I think it works really nicely. And then we'll do the same thing where we bring that darker peach in and we just add a little bit and allow it to seep out into the wet area. Then we'll take a darker color like a blue or green or black and use the tip of the brush to add the fine branches and use the belly of the brush and drag it across the page to create the shapes of leaves. And those leaves do not have to be perfect. I'm going to come back over here and add a few more leaves to this guy. Sometimes I'll um, use a lighter color there so I get a kind of dual color on the leaf. Just adding a little more water to the paint to achieve that. And then again I use the tip of the brush to make the stamen in the center of the flower. I'm doing these little dots going around in a very perfectly imperfect circle. With flowers, you never want anything to be perfectly symmetrical. It will just look odd. And then I use uh, the tip to make those fine lines to join it all together. 
The next one I want to do is a simple berry. I know it's not exactly a flower, but berries are great for filling in space when you're designing a floral piece. And I simply use the belly, that wider bottom part of the brush, to drag out the paint into a circular shape. Again, very not symmetrical, very not perfect. You can group these berries however you like. And then I'm coming in with a different color. I'm using black, but you could certainly use any uh, color, green or brown. And I've just joined them together with some little stems. Our next flower is an open peony. And I start with a very light pink and I do a circle shape. And you can see it's not a full circle. It's just some sort of very light circle, circular shape. Then I come in with a darker color pink and I start to enclose that light circle with these petal shapes. They're all a little bit rounded. They're all a little bit random. The one in front, of course, will be quite round because it's facing the viewer. And you can see how I just work my way around the light circle using the darker color. Some of the petals are smaller, some are larger. And then along the top, what I need to do is continue to enclose that circle. So I need to make sure that the side petals go out far enough that it looks natural, that the circle is sort of um, surrounded on all sides, if that makes sense. Um, but you can see here how the petals are starting to really form this nice flower shape. And you've got that light pocket of color in the middle where we'll eventually place the stain in and it's just very loose and lovely. Now I'm going to take a minute while that dries and add some leaves. I drag the belly of the brush across the page and I shake it a little or I wiggle it a little. Um, sometimes I need to turn the painting upside down so that I can pull the brush towards me so don't be afraid to move your painting around to make it easy for you. And now that the uh, flower has started to dry a little bit, I'm going to come back in with a light brown on the tip of my brush and just add these little vertical lines to represent that big stamen in the middle of the peony. When the peony really opens up, it's got that wonderful burst of golden yellow at its center. And I've changed the color just slightly to suit my piece. The open peony can be complicated, so let's do something more foolproof. We'll start with a stem uh, divided into three here. It all comes to a, a point of one at the bottom. Then I'm coming in with a dark blue. It could be any color. I've got lots of paint on my brush and I'm releasing it through the tip in this sort of quick stippling motion where I get these very beautiful dots and it results in this messy but beautiful vertical flower. Now I'm going to mix up a very light gray with a little bit of purple or red in it um, and lots of white and I'm going to try a daisy. So I'm taking the brush and I'm using the belly, I'm dragging it across the page for these petal shapes, but I'm also using the tip to do simple straight lines. Well, not straight, but lines going in the direction of the petals. And then I'll use the tip to put a little bit of darker gray at the top where the stamen will be. The key with the daisy is that you need to make the page, the white page, look as though it is part of the flower. And so what we're actually painting is the shadowy petals, the darker areas. I'm using a dark green to do these raggedy little leaves. Finally, I'm taking a light yellow and just stippling in a semicircle to represent the stamen at the top. Now we're going to do some very simple roses. So I start with some circles, then I start making these curved lines encircling them, encircling the dots. And then the lines, the curving rounded lines get a little bigger and the paint gets a little lighter. And uh, that's the first one. Let's do the dots again, these stippled dots at the center, curving lines that sort of enclose them. Then the lines get wider and the paint gets lighter. And you can see how these very simple rosebuds emerge. You can add uh, darker paint around the dots in the center there, and that gives a nice effect as the paint sort of seeps out into the wet area. You could do some more curving lines. And then I simply enclose these little rosebuds with some um, tiny petals all kind of uh, together there. And then as it begins to dry, you can add more and more dark paint to the center, but you certainly don't have to. 
The next flower that we're going to do is lavender. I've got this milky purpley gray. I've laid down two stems. They could be going any which way and I use those as my guide and I start doing these little lavender petals and I just drag the brush either away from me or towards me and I let the petals just be what they are. One stroke of the brush and that's it. Some of them are grouped together, some stand alone and we get that beautiful perfectly imperfect look of the lavender. I come back in with a darker purple and I'll add that um, mostly to one side of the lavender but sort of wherever I feel like it and then I'm going to take a green just on the tip of my brush and add the stem that uh, goes through the center there and they're sort of curving and very messy and I think the key with flowers is keeping it a little strange and a little bit messy because they're not supposed to look perfect. The next flower is this relatively simple little four petal flower that I create and the beauty of this one is that you do a grouping and as a grouping it looks really detailed and really pretty so it's great for part of a floral motif or part of a wreath um, because you need large flowers and small flowers I think when you're designing a floral piece so we're doing all these little tiny florals and then we join them together using a darker color and just the tip of that brush um, so I'm adding little stems here and I'm also dotting the center of each flower to create that loose stamen and um, yeah I just sort of give them all a tiny branch the branches don't even all have to connect it is so not a big deal if um, some of them just sort of come out of the middle of nowhere and I'll also use that same dark brown to make some tiny leaves so this one is all about size everything is sort of tiny and detailed and as a grouping I think it just looks so pretty and it is a great space filler when you're not sure what to put somewhere. The next one is in that same category. It's great for filling space in a floral design. We start by making flowers that are little heart shapes or little V shapes and then we join them together using a different color, a contrasting color like a green or a brown. And um, this one I've, I've described as painting a school of fish in the past. You just want to do a grouping of these little heart shapes or V shapes and then you join them all together with these tiny little stems and it creates this burst or spray of floral buds that fills in space really nicely. Okay, last one. This is actually our 12th flower. So this is sort of like a daisy or an echinacea flower, but it's more open. Um, so we start by painting three or four petals that are just oval shapes in the back. Then you place two larger petals in the front and if you need to add one more in behind um, it sort of creates the look of that open flower so four petals along the back maybe five then we bring one down in front another one right in the front and one last one to fill in the circle I'll take a moment to join them with some stems and maybe add a leaf or two. And then while I'm waiting for them to dry so that I can add the stamens, I want to come back and add some detail to some of the other flowers that have begun to dry. So this peony, the front petal needs a little more detail so that we can tell that it is in fact its own petal. So I'm just sort of surrounding it with a darker pink and now you can see it's got a little more detail. Then I'll move on and add just a bit of darker pink in the center of some of the flowers that's just a nice detail to show that there would be a little shadow there that the flower is a three-dimensional uh, thing of course we can add a little dot to these berries and that kind of brings them to life and then the daisy I'm coming in with that dark purpley gray and I want to create some outlines of some petals that are just barely there and this is how we use that white page to um, become part of the white flower and a little detail near the stamen and I think it really pops. My flowers are done and now this last one has dried and I can just put a little bit of messy brown in the center. Nothing special there, but I think it looks cute. And I've completed 12 different flowers. These are all great as part of wreaths or floral designs, floral motifs. Um, I hope you'll give them all a try. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and go check out the e-course if you're interested.